Kevin K. Riley, working with Dr. Victoria Lamont in the Department of English Language and Literature, will speak to us on all that we really know that we have is the flesh, the relevance of ambiguous, shape-shifting bodies in speculative fiction for writing from multiple perspectives. Octavia Butler once said, all that we really know that we have is the flesh. What she meant is that we are often perceived through our bodies. Our race, sex, disability, and so on can influence the course of our lives. I want you all to take a moment to think about your own race and sex. How do you identify? Now, imagine that your race or your sex suddenly changed. How would that change influence various aspects of your life? Your friends or your career, for instance. The goal of new rhetoric and critical race pedagogy is to show writing students that their writing is influenced by their race, sex, etc. This goal is not without challenges. Stacey Waite writes that when she asks her writing students to think about the privileges that contribute to their success, in the words of Julia Kristeva, meaning collapses. Jade Homage posits that the ignorance of the body in rhetoric can be challenged by making rhetoric significantly bodied, citing the precedents of Greek lore, Helene Sixou, and Gloria Ansaldua. No genre is better suited to continuing this tradition than speculative fiction. Many speculative fiction authors use ambiguous and shape-shifting characters to reconsider apparently fixed ideas about race, sex, gender, sexuality, and disability. In Wild Seed, Butler writes about Anyanwu, an African shapeshifter who can change her race and her sex any time she wants. She lives as a white male plantation owner in Louisiana for 30 years. When a slave asks her, does that white skin cover your eyes too? Anyanwu realizes, I had stopped seeing the slaves in front of me. I had been white for too long. What would happen if writing students could make the connection between the range and fluidity of speculative fiction characters, their bodies, and their own bodies and identities. I posit that because depictions like Anyuanu's are ubiquitous in speculative fiction, and because these bodies um, changing often change their minds, that we can use speculative fiction, these ambiguous bodies, these critical questions about what those mean, to change the direction of writing studies, meeting Julie Jung's call for a revisionary consciousness in writing students. I believe that reading speculative fiction, asking these critical questions, can lead to Jung's call for creating change at the level of attitude. My goal is to introduce secondary school and university students to these ambiguous bodies. I believe that when they critically consider how these bodies um, influence our beliefs and identity that we can change writing studies. Thank you. Thank you.